Hey everyone and welcome to 1.21 Gigawatts, I am Peter, that is Connor, and this is our weekly trailer talk discussion show in which we look at the trailers from the week, the biggest trailers, the, the interesting trailers as I almost knock over beverages on my desk. Um, now we didn't have an episode last week, we were running behind last week due, due to some tech issues and we made the call to just push, just roll in some trailers from whatever interesting trailers there were last week into this week. Turns out it was kind of the right call because the list this week isn't actually that big. Now admittedly, when I was going through the trailers I did kind of like, okay, here's some generic rom-coms and stuff, I'll just ignore those ones this week, it's fine. Like, you know, we'll, we'll stick to the, the more interesting variety. But. Yeah, I think because it was the week after Comic Con, there wasn't a ton from last week, so it ended up being nah. kind of a. Kind it, make, it makes sense. It kind of worked out anyway, but uh, so yeah, so we we worked through a bunch of trailers, and at the end of the show, we'll pick our favorite of the week, or in this case, favorite of two weeks. But the point is, favorite of the show is, I guess, maybe it's the more yeah. accurate term. Um, so there we go. That is what we're going to do. So without further ado, we'll get cracking into the first trailer. We got uh, another trailer for Venom. Trailer two. There's been a teaser, a trailer, and this is trailer two. And this one's notable because we got a lot of the plot in the last one. We kind of got a sense of what the plot was pretty well with with the last one, but this one gave us a lot more of actual Venom um, talking specifically, which I thought was notable because it looks really yeah. stupid. <laughs> the a- the animation of it looks just really bad. Like just it just doesn't line up. No, the effects look terrible. I, I I'm not I, I'm not buying it at all. I mean, it looks like effects that have had a lot of money spent on them, but not in the right places. Yeah, I feel like that's one of the the worst things about CG and animation in general is when the the lips don't match what they're saying can be really distracted. It's uh it's really bad in video games. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it can be. It can really just take you out of a uh, out of a moment entirely. I just I kind of expect it to be bad in video games though. Like I I I, I tend to assume it's going to be bad, and then when it's not it's too bad, I'm impressed. Whereas here in a movie, no no no, you're you're with live action actors. You have to get this right. And I yeah. feel like the moment where Venom's talking to him for quite a bit, and you see his mouth m- m- mouth moving, all I could feel like this looks like it's out of sync, or it looks like. Like I don't know, it, like it, do- it doesn't look like there's any way that that mouth is forming those words. No, it, it looks like a video game cutscene from not the whole thing, just the, the the way the mouth is matching the words. It looks like a video game cutscene from like the nineties. Yeah, just just opening and closing at random. Just yes. be like, Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Uh, it looks yeah. really bad. I mean, there, it's not the only effect I think looks really bad. Um, the bit where the, it comes over his face. Hmm. Uh, I think that looks really bad, and then the, the tongue. It looked okay in the first shot, you know, when it when, you, when we're looking, you know, head on, yeah. and then it cuts to the side, and I'm like, oh, that looks really bad. Yeah, it looks. I mean, it could be better by the time the movie comes out, but we're getting quite close now. It's only a couple of months. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it just the effects look. I mean, maybe they're just unfinished, but they look kind of rough. It looks like. Despite the fact that you've got Tom Hardy in there, that it's not actually that big budget a movie. And, you know, I say that not knowing what the budget is. It may actually be like $150 million, in which case, where did you spend it? Because uh, cause I, I imagine this would be easy enough to find out, right? Um, that depends, actually, because quite often you'll go to Box Office Mojo and it'll say NA because they've, they've kept it secret they enough. They don't know yet. Yeah, okay. Mm. Fair enough. So, I don't know if this one is specifically, but... Um, it just it looks kind of rough. I mean, I don't want to talk about the plot too much because we got the plot in the last one. Venom takes over and tries to convince him to kill everyone. And he's like, no, no, we can't kill people. We're we're not bad guys, or I'm not a bad guy. Mm. He's like, nah, we can do whatever we want, and that's the that's the issue movie. Yeah, it had a really awkward bit of humor at the end. Uh, you know, he's like, oh, sorry, I got a parasite, and then just kind of walks out. I'm like, is that meant to be funny? Because it, it really wasn't. Like, I don't get it. It's kind of cringeworthy. It's just, oh, painful. Yeah. Um, you also get a glimpse of, I guess, the villain. Reza Med's character seems to have his own symbiote. Yeah, I I thought it was Carnage, but apparently it's not. Apparently it's called, it's one called Riot, but I don't know enough about Venom to, to know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really either. It didn't look like I Carnage. I just looked at it and went, I went, I guess that's supposed I mean, I, thought, I went, is that supposed to be Carnage? Because it's the closest thing I could think of. Yeah, like, it didn't look like Carnage to me, but I mean, 
if they told me this is just what the movie's carnage is going to look like, I wouldn't have. Like, yeah, that's why I thought, oh, maybe that's meant to be carnage, like, because I didn't like it didn't look right, but I mean, in, in, close enough that if they went, no, this is carnage, I'll believe them, right? Yeah, I don't know, but um, so you see, you see them symbiote fighting at the end, where like the symbiotes are kind of like coming off of them like liquid, but you see them both kind of in the middle of it, and I don't know, it's looking kind of rough. It's, it's impressive how little I give a shit about this movie. Like really, I, I I didn't think I could care this little. So that is Venom. I think more interesting is the full trailer for Elite Battle Angel. We got a teaser a while ago where we first got to see what she looked like and it was stuff. A long time ago now. It was wasn't long. It? Well, the movie got delayed. Yeah, the movie was... got pushed because we got a teaser when it was supposed to come out. I can't remember when the original date was. It was either spring this year or maybe even late last year, but it got pushed. Yeah. I feel like we got that first trailer like. Last summer, May, June, last summer. Yeah, no, that that sounds about right. Um, so we got this full trailer, and I remember when the first teaser came out. The, the first thing that everyone was talking about was how she looked because she's CG. Her, her face is CG, and she's got these big like anime eyes, and it's kind of creepy. It's kind of unnatural, and that's definitely still there. It feels a bit toned down compared to last time, though. I think. Yeah, I think honestly, I feel similar to how I did with the the first episode. Again, I haven't seen that trend in a long time, so just going oh, it's off been a memory. While. Yeah, I never had a problem with the face as a whole. Just the eyes. The eyes made everything look strange because they were oversized and made everything look out of proportion. But the rest of the face, I thought, actually looked pretty good. And I, I feel the same here. For the most part, it 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 becomes noticeable because of the eyes. If they were normal, I don't think it would be that that weird. It's that kind of thing where I would notice it. Let's take let's assume the eyes were normal, right? I would notice it, and it, but at that point, though, if the eyes are normal, then why have a CG face? <laughs> but yeah, um, but that I would probably notice it every once in a while. Like it would be that kind of thing. You know, when you're reading a book and you lose yourself in it, but then every so often you you notice you're reading again and you get drawn out of it just a little bit. That's that's yeah. what that face would be. It, every so often, I'd, I'd notice how fake it looked and I'd be drawn yeah. back out of it. But it's not bad for a just a cg face as a person it, it looks yeah, pretty I mean, good overall for, for what it is yeah i mean i mean there's a lot more talent getting into this than the venom cg i'll, I'll say that much <laughs> Definitely. Uh, uh, do you know i i'm, I'm going to be surprisingly uh, positive here i think I, I thought this trailer looked not bad <laughs> yeah I, I thought i'm into it i think the action looks kind of fun um hard being like a mech with lots of different attachments it's, and like another body she can grab some, onto some gorgeous city shots of her like running across the skyline yeah some nice city shots Christoph Waltz is always a plus uh, for sure yeah um yeah like uh, obviously it was, it was based on an anime right or a manga and you yes. can definitely feel those influences in there uh but I don't know the, the music was working for me the the mm -hmm. uh all the slow motion of her dodging fights and when it, when it jumped into the fight scenes that's where i kind of peaked up a, a little bit specifically i thought the fight scenes had a really good mixture of these slow-mo sequences like you said but other times just being so fast like the the moment where the guy goes to grab and she just grabs the guy and slams him down it's so quick well for me it wasn't this i mean the speed's there don't get me wrong but for me the, what, what really stuck out to me was the impact of whenever it did do that whenever there was the quick punches or everything every single mm. hit felt like it had an oomph to it and you could argue okay that's just a bit of subwoofer every time she hits something sure it is but it helps yeah but that's not really i mean it 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 feels like everything has impact like she's like a lethal machine um mm. so if we're doing the she's you know she's a she's a robot she's a girl she's a real girl she got a conscience so she's a robot she's built for killing but she's going to have a you know she's going to have the iron giant kind of i can be whatever i you know by the end of the story I, i'll be whatever i want to be whatever i choose to be yeah uh if that's what the story is then fine i like those types of stories with the robots and, and ai that's cool yep. but um yeah i'm oddly it looks it looks fun doesn't it I'm oddly optimistic. I didn't expect to be. Her eyes are still kind of freaking me out a little bit, but might get used to it. It's hard to say, oh, you know, because it's only a two-minute trailer. Once you sat there for half an hour, you might just get used to it, maybe. Very possibly. Um, but I'm oddly into it. Also, I laughed at the start. It came up saying from from James Cameron, and I'm like, okay, I know he's producing it, but this feels a bit misleading. He's like the producer of like these two. I was like, yeah, he also directed those movies. Avatar, yeah. yeah, he also directed those. This feels a bit disingenuous. And it's like from the from Robert Rodriguez, the director of Sin City, and I'm like, come on, <laughs> like, 
I yeah, they were really playing it up, weren't they? Yeah. Um, I think that's uh, Fox to blame on that one. Probably. They're, well, they're probably nervous about this. That's why they delayed it, and they're, they're, they're really selling the names to try and make it a make it a hit. I'm surprised. I feel like with a good marketing campaign, I feel this this should grab a good audience. December as well um, has been doing good for this sort of movie over the last decade. Yeah, but how close is this to Star Wars? That's true, actually. Wait, is there a Star Wars this year? Well, there isn't, is there? No, no, there's not. It's next year. Sorry, uh, I was thinking this was next year. You're uh, right. Because Solo came out in, in May. Yeah, no, I, I forgot. December, I, it? I forgot yeah. that existed already. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I, I guess. Well, I mean, it does have competition, though. It has like, um, I mean, Aquaman's November, but there's a couple of things coming at the end of the year. No, Aquaman's December. Is that December? Yeah. Oh, Wonder Woman's November. No, that's next year. We're mixing the years up. We're mixing the years up. Yeah. We are. I don't know why, but we are. We are. Yeah. It does have competition. There's definitely some big movies out in but December. Basically, but... everyone went, shit, there's no Star Wars. This is our year. Go, go, go. Yeah. Honestly, I see this bombing. I really do. Good or bad, regardless of quality. And I'm oddly into it after this trailer. I'm oddly looking forward to it. But I still think it's going to bomb. Quite possibly. Yeah. I think it depends how it's marketed. With a good campaign, I think it could do well. I feel I don't know I'm getting this kind of mainstream aren't going to like how sci-fi this is vibe from it you know like I'm getting that I don't know I don't know I feel like if they if they show enough of the action in the trailers close to the time the TV spots I think you'll get a lot of them in because it worked for Ghost in the Shell yeah I know but wrong, a different time of year this is <laughs> this is the this is this is taking the Christmas slot which mm. like I said People like going and see just something light and easy at Christmas, right? Uh, when you've got the, you know, you've got those uh, holidays, people like going and see okay. that sort of movie. That's why even the Hobbit movies did well. You know, even even the you know the ones that weren't that great still did pretty well. You may be right. You may be right. I mean, if it's good, I hope it does well. If it's not good, then I don't care. But oddly, I'm feeling optimistic after this trailer. It was kind of like a fun action sci-fi movie. Um, yeah. So we'll see. Uh, so next up, we had a trailer for something called Hunter Killer. This is a, a Gerard Butler film where he's he's on a submarine and the US and Russia are at the brink of war. Uh, the twist here is that their fancied submarine that's high-tech has to go and rescue the, as they say in the trailer, this is their phrasing, the President of Russia. And maybe it's just me I, I get why this is like an idea for a movie like the idea that oh we're going to save the president and, and uh, we're going to be in the brink of World War 3 the whole time but you know we're going to like avoid it and it's all going to be about you know the the, the, the end he's going to like, respect the, the, the you know the sailors in the submarine and it's going to be this thing I don't think the world wants to watch a movie where the American Navy is saving the, the leader of Russia I don't think people want to watch that right now <laughs> probably not I'm just I don't see what the appeal of this is for anyone. Like and I mean I'll be anyone. Honest. I'll be honest, I don't see the appeal of most Jared Butler movies though. That's fair. <laughs> I mean well, I don't understand why they appeal to anyone. The Olympus movies are alright. The, the, the it's dumb action movies are alright. Um alright, fine. You've but, got what, two movies there? Yeah, but the the rest of his filmography. Despite the fact that some of it should appeal, they're always just too dumb. It's kinda like they're really bland and just like, I don't. I like. I'm like. Who? Who want? Who enjoys this? There's, it's got nothing to set it apart. Most of them, in my experience, anyway. Yeah, I feel like it doesn't take the right roles. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really blaming him here. I'm just. It, I, I, like, I don't think he's the problem with the movies. Just I, I he, think, he's always in those sort of movies. I think he should be in dumb action movies, but I feel like he mostly picks these really, really awful, like just blandly directed things, like. I don't know, something a bit more charm, I think, would, would suit him fine. But, I mean, yeah. Galdi is a great actor, but I mean, he can carry a movie he's well enough. He's not awful, though, is he? Uh, like that, That's the thing. Like, I agree. I don't think he's amazing, but I never think, when when I watch one of his movies, I never think he's the problem with it. It's a it's usually a boring, bland movie, but it's never usually his fault. He's yeah, yeah. Sp- script direction, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So... Yeah, it's called Hunter Killer. It's you know, uh, Linda Cardinelli's in there. Gary Oldman's in it. Okay. Who's Gary Oldman in it? No idea, but his name's in the title. Oh, okay. I don't remember seeing him either, which I feel is weird because you probably show Gary Oldman in your trailer, right? 
Um, he was probably there. I bet he was just like had like a funny hair cut or something, and <laughs> we just didn't recognize he d- him. He definitely yeah, didn't have a mustache. Out. I feel like I recognize him with a mustache a mile away, but you know, you take away yeah. the mustache, you give him some weird hair because he is a bit of a chameleon. He does really kind of sink into his roles at times. So he does. There, there, there have definitely been roles in the past where I haven't recognized him at first. Also, it bugged me the second half of this trailer. Some music kicked in. It's one of those. Uh, it's not. I don't think it's two steps from hell specifically, but it's one of those types of groups who do like music that's used in trailers a lot. And I recognise the track, and it's bugging me. I'm going to have to look it up later and see if uh, anyone's like asked what what it is from this specifically and track mm-hmm. it down because I recognised it. But it kind of took me out of it almost. Not that I was like, super into it, but it took me out of it because I, I recognised the track and went, "Oh, I like this track." But I'm so used to hearing it as yeah. a track that it, it felt as like because i think these these tracks are supposed to like almost disguise themselves as score as if they've been written for that trailer and then they've not been written for this one specifically but they're kind of disguised as that and it took me out of it because i'm like no this is a track that was made as a yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true. a lot of recognizable music though because i recognize this one as well like i said in elita we had uh, the the linkin park cover yeah the, the uh, slow, there was another trailer the slow moody cover of a uh, of a uh, an otherwise not slow song which is popular in trailers these days yeah to, to be fair, that that song wasn't that upbeat. It was a it was a relatively slower one for Linkin Park. What are you arguing here? The the cover is way slower and moodier. Oh, it's slower. Yeah, yeah. I'm not disputing that. <laughs> yeah, but but no. Was, uh, there's another trailer. One of them coming up. I'll, uh, maybe I'll know when we get there. But that had something that I recognised as well. Like just yeah, you know, out out of like you know, there's what eight or nine trailers this week. I recognise you know three or four. I'm like, it's quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, so next up, we had the teaser for um, "I Think We're Alone Now," and of course, I mean you don't hear the track in this, but it makes you think of a song, right? It does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is Peter Dinklage in a post-apocalyptic movie, and this is only a minute long. This teaser, give or take, and uh, it's just kind of him walking down an empty street. But there's like, you hear some dialogue with him, and I think it's Ellie Fanning is the is the other it is, uh, yeah. star, and he's basically just dis- uh, debating whether or not it's lonely. And at the end, he's just like, "Yeah, it's it's effing lonely," and it cuts, and that's you know t- the title comes up. But you're saying, "Okay, so what's in this teaser then?" Well, this is one of these things that I like about good teasers is that it just gives me a tone. It doesn't give me a whole lot of plot. It doesn't give me a whole lot of anything else, but it gives me a tone and a vibe. And I feel like this gives me a fairly unique tone for what a post-apocalyptic movie might be. Yeah. I, I thought it was a weird because I, I actually struggled to hear most of the dialogue through the trailer because uh, the music mix was mm. horrible. But actually, this this was the one that had uh, the piece of music. I think it might have been like from from Interstellar or something like that. And then it it's got and then another piece overlaid over it because there's like two pieces there that they they, they kind of blended together. Mm. Um, but I couldn't hear most of the dialogue over it, which I mean I'm, I'm getting the mood still just from looking yeah. at it, but I couldn't really tell what he was saying. Yeah, it mentioned it's from one of the directors of The Handmaid's Tale, which is a good sign because that show is really well directed. Was it director? I thought it was producer. Maybe maybe it was both. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure. Because I remember thinking, well, that's weird. It's not like one person directed the whole show. Oh, no, you're right. No, direct. Yeah. I think I'm just so used to seeing that pop up and it, when it's something like that from the producers, you know, that I just kind of assumed. But... Um... I mean, I'm intrigued. Like, I wouldn't say I'm excited for it yet, but I'm intrigued just based on this kind of moody piece of him walking down the street and the to the music, to the way it cuts at the end. It's just got a kind of starkness to it. Uh, but yeah. it's not, you know, so... I'm, I'm, Definitely I'm intrigued. seeing a full trailer. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll, we'll be... I think intrigue's the best word to describe how I feel about that after watching it. But I think it does what a teaser does. It kind of made me go, okay, what's this? I'm curious now. And if it's yeah. made me do that, then it succeeded in some level. So Yeah, definitely. Next up, we had a film called uh, What Keeps You Alive, and this appears to be a... How do you... I mean, it's, I mean, one of the blurbs in it says it's a horror movie. I, I, it may be a full-on horror movie. I, I'd describe it more as a, a survival thriller, where you have this uh, this this couple, this, this, this lesbian couple, where one of them has been married before, and she has a new wife up in this cabin in the woods, but the film, it, the trailer cuts around, jumps around a lot, obviously. But it becomes very clear very quickly that she very lately killed her previous wife, and she's brought her new wife up here to hunt her and kill her up here in some capacity. And the story of the film seems to be the new wife gaining strength, fighting back, and 
possibly winning. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, that's usually <laughs> yeah. how these end. Usually how they end, but... Um, I mean, it's interesting because I had no idea what this was, and I clicked on it, and like I was just sort of like, okay, they're talking about her, her, you know, her first wife who died, and I'm like, where are we going with this? And then all of a sudden, it became this sort of like hunting thriller where she's like, you know, and it's a little bit, she's a little bit crazy and unstable, and it's got kind of a dark vibe to it, and it's there's a lot of uh, chasing through the woods, lots of uh, streaming, and lots of you know various things. I mean, I'm not necessarily convinced it's good yet. Like I'm not. No, it's 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 definitely got style. Um, it peaked up a little bit for me around halfway when uh, the music came in. It came up with the big neon writing for you know whatever the people had said. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's giving me a sense of direction in terms of using that as a choice. There was a gorgeous shot of them rowing across the lake um, with the way the light was hitting it. I thought yeah. that that stood out to me in the trailer. Visuals are but, good. I mean, I think that's very yeah, safe. Yeah, good. I I don't know how much. I, I care but at the same time like I mean it's, it looks it looks well made for sure it looks like someone's tried and you know you put some real effort in well I think that's the sort of thing you're, you're all going to get that I mean do you care about the characters do you care about the, the character surviving yeah. you're all going to get that from the movie really exactly so that's the thing it's hard to get excited for because it just but um, but it looks well made so I mean maybe it'll be very good yeah uh, again intrigued not 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 full on hype train per se, but yeah. intrigued. Um, and I don't I don't know about the performance from the new wife, but the killer wife uh does seem to be having an interesting performance. There's a lot of shots of her like kind of looking kind of crazy with like blood splatter on her face and stuff, and uh she seems to have a good bit of you know menacing presence. Yeah. Uh, so you know, uh, so that's what keeps yeah. you alive. Next up, we get a trailer for a film that's written and directed by Jonah Hill. Uh, out of nowhere, this is a thing. He's, he's, he's writing and directing movies and it's called Mid 90s and I think the most prominent thing about this is short and 4x3 and a lot of effort is went to make this feel as authentic as possible and what I mean by that is is it legitimately looks like it was shot in the mid 90s yeah the very first thing I noticed was the A24 thing logo because they they put it out, uh, they made it out of skateboards. Uh, yeah, because the, the, the characters on it are all skateboards, which are skateboarders rather. Uh, <laughs> the characters are all skateboards. <laughs> oh, that'd be way more interesting. <laughs> that'd, that'd, be, that, that'd be an interesting film. I'll give it that. Uh, but so, yeah, it's a coming of age story. It's just a sort of middle aged, you know, middle 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 school sort of age kid uh, who doesn't like his big brother very much, and he ends up befriending some other skateboarders um, in town and becomes sort of embroiled with them and. Uh, they don't appear to be necessarily like it's not so much that he, he starts to befriend criminals but he befriends a bunch of people who have a bit more attitude and he kind of becomes one of them and it seems to he gets, he gets into a lot of trouble his big brother gets concerned and fights with him uh, there's a lot of like running from the police there's, there's getting up to trouble into trouble getting up to no good but it's like he's finding something that ex- accepts him uh, but it does feel super 90s like and not just because of the visuals and because of the uh, the the skateboard just, culture. Just the way it feels, like the look, the grain. Yeah, everything about it, everything does. Um, it it feels, you know, it feels like this this kid's like you know drifting into a different life, and he's he, his brother like because it's it's heavily implied at the start. His brother treats him like shit, and then is upset with him that he's starting to like make friends with people he doesn't approve of, and it's like, well, if you didn't treat him like shit, maybe he wouldn't have you know straight yeah. away from home and you know went looking for other people who accepted them I mean, you know maybe there's a the yeah, lesson yeah. there um again I mean, i'm using the word intrigued a lot i'm intrigued because it does look so authentic and it does have its own story because to- i feel like with a story like this where you've got this coming of age story there's so many coming of age movies where it's very easy for me to roll my eyes and say it feels like a coming of age movie i'll give this a bit of credit because i feel like there's enough distinct style here that's fair. I don't think it's for me, but mm-hmm. I, I I can't. I it's 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 something we've said about a lot of A twenty four movies, right? That even the ones where they're not for 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 us, you can see what they're going for. They they they're definitely going to find an audience, and yeah, probably succeed. Give from what we can tell. Is, is this just your weird thing where you don't like the nineties and stuff set in the nineties? No, I, don't, I mean I don't think so. It just <laughs> no nothing about it really grabbed me. Okay. All right. I, I, I know, I know you. Oh, you know, uh, it, it's not just a, a coming of age movie, but I really love just regular coming of age movies. So I'd rather watch one of those. 
Well, it's still a coming of age movie, though. I'm just saying. No, no, but I'd rather watch just a regular one. Where you know, go, oh, it's just that's a coming of age movie. You know, like just one of them. I like to me, that's yeah, that's why I'd quite happily just stick on this and be like, yeah, it, it looks fine. Like don't get me wrong, but it's it. it I, I feel like it would never be my choice of oh yeah, I'll watch that now. Okay. Uh... I think it looks interesting. I'm, I'm really impressed with the visual style because it, it. I mean, obviously, it's intentionally not great quality because it's meant to look like it's in the nineties. Uh, yeah. But like, it's very effective. Like, it does genuinely look like that. It is. It's, it's quite impressive. It's one of the most authentic. We're going to shoot this to make it look like it was shot at the time. Things I've yeah. ever seen. It looks really authentic. Uh, although does, I, yeah. I do feel old now that a, a decade that I lived through is now such a period piece. Yeah. yeah yeah it's just weird but hey i mean hell i was i was younger than this kid admittedly so at least i'm a bit younger but you know in the mid 90s i'd have been not like, not not by far i, I would have been six going with 95 i was six yeah this kid's what 11 12 something like that yeah yeah maybe, maybe 10 to 12 i'd say hmm. so Next up, we had a trailer for a film called Lizzie, and I remember talking about this a little bit actually. Yeah, it's Chloe Savini and Kristen Stewart, and Kristen Stewart's the the new maid at this this house. Uh, Chloe Savini's the daughter of the, the 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 sort of the rich father, and the rich father seems to a sexually abuse and or assault Kristen Stewart's maid character, uh, but it generally seems to be an awful person. Uh, his daughter seems to hate him, and the movie seems to revolve around. The you know the the two two uh, lady characters uh, forming a romance and ultimately going to to commit murder on her parents because they're awful people and they hate both of them and the the, the trailer kind of neatly starts with like her being questioned about the, the dad's murder and like hey did, did your dad have any enemies and it kind of comes back around to that at the end so some credit there because it, it kind of bookends it a little bit so it gives it a bit of structure which is nice not yeah. all trailers do that so I, I I always appreciate when they do try it uh, what did you think of this one. I think it's a very well-made trailer again. Um, it's It's got style. It knows what it's going for. Uh, I think it does a, a very good job of getting across what the movie is, unlike some of the trailers that we see. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I don't I don't think this is one for me, but I can appreciate what it's doing here. That's, that's fair. Um, I'm not a big fan of stuff set in this time period, necessarily. Or, you know, th- yeah. th- th- this kind of thing where it's the, the, your chambermaids and your, your, your rich family and stuff i'm not super into those those tropes but i, I did peak i did get a little bit interested as it went on when it became more about oh they're clearly planning to murder them okay there's, there's a bit more to this than just than what it is there's a bit more of an edge to it perhaps yeah but you know I'm, I'm not like super into it and i'm not like i mean some people like swear by kristen shirt now like she, she's had i've not seen uh was it personal shopper i think it was the one she did that turned a lot of opinions on her People, people like oh, Definitely. Kristen Stewart, yeah. Forgive her for Twilight because personal shopper, she's proved what she can do. Uh, I've not seen that yet, so I, I can't, I can't comment. Right now, right now, she's still Twilight girl. Um, I'm trying to think if I've seen her in anything since Twilight. I saw her in something before Twilight. Did you? Yeah, Panic Room, the David Fincher movie. Oh, fair enough. She's like a fourteen-year-old in that. Oh, was she any good in it? I mean, from what I remember, she was, she was, a, she was a, you know. Mid teen, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know. Just having a scan, see if I've actually seen her in anything since. I saw her in Adventureland. No, no, I haven't. No, I never saw that. I saw that. Uh, that was only okay. I, I, I wasn't super into it. I, I feel, I feel like it was like Kristen Stewart and Jesse Eisenberg both playing themselves, and I, I found it really tedious. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah, you know, I was like, I don't, I don't care about their relationship. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding yeah. me? You, you no, put... I think I've literally just seen her in Twilight. Oh, apparently she was in Jumper. I saw that. I'm, I'm, I must have. That was that before Twilight. It was. It was. So there you go. I saw her before Twilight as well. I just didn't know it. There you go. Not, that, not that that was a very good movie. So it didn't really help. Um, I mean, I've never seen the Twilight movies, to be fair. Have you not? Happily. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, Happily. I, I got dragged them. to a couple. Um, I avoided them like the plague, and I'm, I'm, I'm more healthy for it, thank you very much. I don't, I don't blame you. Yeah. 
Do you know what? I'm really glad that that whole fad just kind of went away, right? Like for a Which while, one specifically. Well, just just the that's that particular young adult fad that it was Twilight and it led to like the uh, the, the 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 City of Bones, whatever it was called, and then there was another couple yeah, of them around that time. Yeah, instruments. And I'm glad that that fad, for, you know, in terms of how, I mean, obviously there's still existing things. That, they tried one with uh, Chloe Grace Moretz this year, <laughs> I think, or was that last year? Whatever it was. It was the Alien Invasion one, but there was a time in Twilight was at its highest when the movies were coming out, where that particular type of, like, emo, young adult yeah. thing was, was, like, all the rage, and I'm really glad that that's died down a bit. And, you know, just like the Divergent series, which didn't even get its last movie, because it, they, they split the last book in two, and then the, the, the first half did so poorly that it never got to do the last one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, and we, we should point out this this that franchise Twilight is, is partially to blame for that split in the last in two bollocks. Oh well, Harry Potter's I think. Uh... Both of them, yeah, no, but both of them are to blame. Don't get me wrong. Which I don't know which one did it first. They were about at the same time, weren't they? Uh, why do I say Harry Potter? Because well, because because Twilight only started in like two thousand nine, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, something like that. Yeah, I mean. There we go. Part two of Twilight was 2012. Can't be that far off, right? Oh, 2011 for, for Harry Potter. So, yeah. Yeah. Aye. That's it. It's that little snot-faced Harry Potter's fault. Yeah, yeah. You get, you get, you get away with doing it once. It's then when someone jumps on, it's like, well, we can do it now as well. Yes, and then it became a fad for a while, but to the point where superhero movies almost jumped on and then cancelled their plans last minute. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not sure there are any really great examples. Like Harry Potter is probably one of the, the least offensive examples of it that I've seen. Yeah, but even that, like the, the first part is still like annoying because it's just the first half. It, it does have some problems because of it, yeah. You, you can't watch it on its own. You, 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 watch them, you have to watch them back to back now, really. Yes. But um, I'm compared usually... to some of the other compared to some of the other examples, though, it's it's not the worst. What's funny is the one that I can th- I think is the best. Although I would still never watch it on its own, just because I might watch the whole thing. But is one that wasn't intended to be split, and that's Kill Bill. Like, yeah. That that was made as one movie, and then the, you know the distributors went, "Hey, we're not releasing a four and a half hour movie. <laughs> split it mm-hmm. in half." And he he rejiggered a couple of little things to give it more of an ending, but. I mean, it does kind of just end, but it does end with a nice little sort of like, oh, this is a reveal to come back for. Here's your little cliffhanger, like, and oh, that's fair. But be- because it was wasn't written to like draw it out, it still just, it never it doesn't feel like the pacing suffers. Yeah, because it wasn't yeah. planned that way. I think you know some of the worst examples are probably uh, the last Hunger Games movies. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I think the first two are really the, the second one in particular is a, is a re- great movie. The second one's good. The first one's only okay. Second one's the first good. One's pretty good, but the second one I think's great. No, I, I think the first then, one suffers. The first one suffers for a, for a movie about a game where kids are being forced to murder each other. It's far too light and fluffy. I never felt the weight. Bad. I never felt the weight of what they were doing, and their kids killing each other. I should feel that. I should be like shocked and horror at that and I just I was like eh. that, that, that's fair but you know <laughs> it, it was a young adult movie right it was like light so. entertainment so 2 was a yeah. bit better because it was playing on the, the it was like subverting what the first movie did and then then it just went, it just nosedived yeah 3, yeah, three and 4 but, were just but, stretched out garbage and, and let's, let's not even get started on the Hobbit's bollocks aye garbage so yeah. um aye <laughs> split your movie in two try three so um <laughs> well that that was a book that was split in two and then they split the second movie in two <laughs> so the worst part is i think two movies was fine like, i i can see that being really good as two movies don't be wrong because they did have some you know they supplement supplemental material there was enough there for two movies there was nowhere near enough for three Five not, minutes not a chance. Pl- five minutes of plot was stretched out of two hours for that third movie. I, I I always laugh that 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 third movie, you know, it's all the battle in in the book. That that is literally like less than a page because Bilbo just gets knocked out and then the battle's over. Because the battle's not the important part. Therefore, we don't need exactly. a whole movie about it. It just happens. Yeah. It, it's it's like it, it literally is like three lines of like, oh, battle starting. Come on, let's do this. He's knocked out and then he's waking up going. What happened? Oh yeah, 
let's catch you up cliff notes yeah Leslie looks all right <laughs> It looks all right. It looks like the performances, uh, particularly from Chloe Sevigny, looks quite interesting. Um, it's it, she has some presence. It looks like it'll be a nice kind of like almost another coming of age story, but like sort of a dark coming of age story where it's, they embrace like, their inner dark side to try and like regain control of their lives. It, and yeah, so I don't know. It looks like something that might be a nice catharsis when they, they finally get their revenge or something like that towards the end. Um, yeah, definitely. Hey. and then the last trailer we got this week uh, to talk about is Blue Iguana which is such an absurd trailer to me because you've got Sam Rockwell and you've got uh, John Ralphio, whoever his real name is yes. Ben Schwartz there you go, uh, John Ralphio from Parks and Rec they're like people who are hired they're obviously Americans and they're hired by a British woman to come to London and steal this bag that's got a diamond in it and then the gangsters don't like it very much they try and steal it back and then the woman has to come clean about what they were doing and they were still in a diamond that would it's worth like you know 60 million or whatever and like oh okay we're in let's just team up and do this so it's like an action comedy where they're like you know they're, they're slight hearty there's a lot of jokes but they're, they're, they're trying to fight these gangsters and keep this diamond which is called the blue iguana hence the title I this is a bizarre trailer to me because I really like Sam Rockwell John Raphael yep. can, can be fun yep every other person around them is pretty bad too awful yeah yeah is is this the first trailer that's gotten to say academy award winner sam rockwell <laughs> i don't be. think i've seen one yet it may be it may be i don't know but it may be how is this the first it, it it's bizarre to me i like how did they get these two for this movie why, why this movie why did they agree and say yes i don't <laughs> Don't understand it looks really bad i mean they're they look like they're doing them and i like them as, as actors sam yeah. rockwell especially but this just looks bad it looks so bad i want to like it because i like these guys it's, it's like it's trying to because yeah. of sam rockwell i'm thinking of like um oh what was the assassin one with anna kendrick mr and mrs Mr. Uh, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright. Right. That was really good. Even something like Seven Psychopaths. I was thinking of the tone of those movies because, you know, it's Sam Rockwell mm. and, like, there's the other assassins are, like, falling over themselves and falling down in a museum and, like, there's... And, but it's yeah. all painfully unfunny. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, ugh. I, I thought... I don't I, understand how you get that unfunny. In particular, the, uh, the British woman who hires them Every single yeah. line she had, I thought she was half asleep. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I guess they just blew the budget on the pair of them, and then it was like, shit, what do we do now? I guess. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but that's Blue Iguana. does not look good. Um, uh, the Stinker. That said, mm. I'd, I'd probably still rather watch it than Hunter Killer, <laughs> just for the record. I feel like I could have stupid fun with Blue Iguana. Possibly. It depends. The, the trailer's not a good sign, but... No, possible. no, but it, it might be just so bad that I can laugh at it. Whereas Hunter Killer will probably just bore me. Maybe. I don't know. But anyway, uh, so that's the last trailer, which means we get to pick our favourite trailer of the week. So... This is interesting. So I'm going to let you answer first. I've got, I've got two in mind, but you... I think for me it's pretty easy. It's it's Alita. Yeah, um, see, that was the first thing that sprung to my mind because I'm actually really excited for that movie now. Surprisingly, I did not expect to be. So I have to give it credit for the surprise of like kind of winning me over in a way I didn't expect to be. But I do have to give mid nineties props because mid nineties stuck out f for its style for for looking genuinely like it's a nineties movie, as in it was yeah, shot in the nineties. I can't argue with that. I you know honestly, there's a lot of decent trailers this week. Though. I, I feel like we talked about a lot there that think oh the trailer's well put together the movie looks good, solid and well made uh, and it's just a case of does the quality yeah. live up to it once the, the movie's actually in full I think uh, my only critique of mid 90s uh, you know, as a trailer is it might have shown too much that's fair like just just you know a bit like it went a bit far in telling us what was going to happen maybe but i think that maybe, I th maybe I, it'll maybe it'll swerve that i don't know i think that i think lizzie i think what keeps you alive i think we're alone now all of those were all pretty decent uh 
showings of like being like, oh, okay, like I see quality here, I see potential here. Yeah. None of them were like no, stinkers. Um, whereas Blue Iguana and Hunter Killer were were the stinky ones. Um, and let's suppose, not forget Venom. I suppose Venom as well. Yes. Although I still think I'd rather watch Venom than those two. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. Take that for what you. At least Tom Hardy's there for that. Yeah. Uh, but Alita Battle Angel is probably my favourite too. I, I did not expect I, I, to say that at all. But no, I, I thought the, the, the teaser, I don't really remember much of it. But I remember thinking, oh, it looks all right. Maybe, maybe I'll enjoy it. But I don't remember being ex- I definitely was never excited. But I came out of this trailer thinking, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to this now. And so that's that's really positive. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of into it. Uh, the action looks fun, if nothing else. And if they do the whole robot with a heart. Who's going to save the world? Yeah. I'll take that. You're, too. you're a sucker for that story, aren't you? Let's be honest. I am. I kind of am. Uh, hell, it's part of Brad Bird's best film, The Iron Giant. So moving on, uh, that is the end of the show. Third best film. That is as trailer talk uh, for the week. Uh, don't listen to Connor; he's delirious and stupid and ginger. So thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, we always appreciate it. Let us know what you thought of the trailers this week in the comments below. If you want to support the channel and the show and everything we do here, head over to Patreon.com/slash/MailFuzzTV. Um, you can support us over there just for one dollar you get some bonuses get some stuff early so please do that uh, also if you if you uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I forgot where I was going with that maybe audio feeds it's been a long it's been a long day oh yeah there's a list of all the audio feeds over there on Patreon as well so even if you don't want to uh, you know be a patron you can go over there and get a handy set of links um, and the audio feeds are, are up and running uh, we're now on Spotify as well uh, so it's a new platform any, anything for your convenience apparently if, if, that, if that makes life easier uh, most of our audio feeds are on Spotify now so uh, but hey that is, uh, that is that is us so thank you very much once again for watching and listening we always appreciate it keep watching movies guys and we'll see you next time